Hello and welcome to this look at how volume of solution affects temperature change. We're going to use Q equals MC delta cal those are T calculations applied to reacting solutions and we'll finish off with a worked multiple choice question. So let's review the practical setup. It can be quite straightforward uh, like two coffee cups for example one put inside another and uh, inside you can see what we've got. We've got the reaction mixture, we've got a stir that helps to move the reactants around to make sure they're evenly mixed. We've got an insulated stopper that goes in the top of one of the coffee cups and the idea of one coffee cup stacked inside another provides a bit of extra insulation. So both of those are for minimizing heat loss. Obviously the thermometer records any transfer of heat energy either in or out of the chemical system. So your coffee cup calorimeter idea consists of the thermometer, which will be part of the surroundings, and also the water in which the solution is dissolved will be part of the surroundings. So let's consider the effects of any changes to this setup. So if we increase the volume first of all, you can see on the left hand side we've got a smaller volume, two samples each 25 centimeters cubed, the same concentration of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, so obviously this is going to be neutralization, which makes water and a salt. So the equation for the neutralization is at the bottom in the purple box. And I've highlighted water because delta nu to H is what we'll be measuring this time. It will be the neutralization enthalpy, which is uh, defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of water is made um, from a neutralization between an acid and a base. On the right hand side, we've got a bigger sample same concentration, twice the volume. So not surprisingly, you make twice the number of moles of water. So what does this actually mean? Well, if you've got twice the number of moles of water, you have twice the energy released. But it's dispersed over twice the volume of water so the effect on the temperature change, although you're making more energy, the energy is dispersed over a larger volume of liquid, so the temperature change that's picked up stays the same. What if we now keep the volume the same, but we increase the concentration instead? So the same scenario on the left-hand side there. But on the right-hand side, we're now going to use two moles per decimeter cubed of each of our reactants which now means that the amount of water is doubled. And like we said before, this would produce twice the energy. However, it's dispersed over the same volume of water, so this will affect the temperature change. The temperature change this time will double because the energy is trapped in the same volume, but there's twice as much energy being released. So on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you can see the three-point summary. The left-hand side is more, con sorry, less concentrated, so less moles reacting, less energy in the same volume. Right-hand side is more concentrated, more moles reacting, more energy in the same volume. So let's look at a multiple-choice exam question to see how this might come across in a paper. So looking at it, you've got two scenarios. The first experiment which I'm highlighting in purple. Essentially, the number of moles of water made is 0.05. So what I've done is I've taken 50 divided by 1,000 and multiplied it by 100. And I've done it for either the NaOH or the HNO3. It doesn't matter which one you choose because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio in this particular reaction as well. So the total volume the energy is dispersed in is 100 centimeters cubed. If we look at the pink highlighted version now, you can see that this time round, the number of moles of water made in experiment two is 0.025. So why is that? That's because we've got 25 centimeters cubed of the same concentration of NaOH, or you could go for 25 centimeters cubed of the same volume of the same concentration rather of HNO3. So what's happening here? Basically, half the energy is released compared to experiment one. 
Now, if the total volume in experiment two would be the same, then the temperature rise would have as well. But the volume is half. So what happens, the temperature rate, uh, change remains unaffected. So therefore, because it says in the question that the temperature increases by 6.0 degrees C in the first experiment, if we're deciding in the second experiment that the energy is dispersed in half the volume, and but the half of the energy is being made, those two things combined will mean that the actual temperature change is the same. So therefore we go for answer C. Okay, hopefully this has been a useful look at this slightly tricky conceptual idea. Until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.